people get all twisted about. We go through, and there's in the it's, you get to a point where it goes. Imagine what it would feel like. A place you've never been. You don't know if you're going to be able to stay or go. Imagine what it must feel like living in these quarters. And I'm looking at the quarters, and these are like bunks, hammocks, two sinks. Looks pretty good to me, all right? I'm going. Imagine what those non-voluntary immigrants experience. And if you're going to put this picture up, put that one up too. How dare you ignore? Because you want me to empathize. You want me to feel the struggle and the suffering and the fear. And I'm okay with that. But who cries for them? The 10,000 buried in the African burial ground that nobody, that's not on the tour. Where is the empathy for them? Where is the, the headphone saying, imagine not only not wanting to go, not knowing where you're going to go, and having your children, your wives, your people raped in front of you. Imagine that. Not wanting to go and not knowing where you're going. Where is the picture there? They were issued into another room where they say, and then they underwent medical prodding to determine if they were fit to stay or they're going to be sent back. And in this case, and I look closely because you know me, I look closely because I said, possibly could it be? 1800s, we got to find J. Marion Sims in here, and surely his speculum is there. The speculum used to evaluate European women coming through. But did they tell you when they showed you Sims' instruments, the one who's standing in Central Park, that those instruments were developed by experimenting on black women? No, you see, that's not said. It just says, look at this instrument he developed, and these poor women had to undergo these sorts of examinations. Do you see? Mm -hmm. And so I'm watching this, and while I can empathize with that, who empathize? Where are the tears? Where are the tears? Where is the empathy of America? And that, to me, is part of the problem with why we're seeing a society of people who are done. When we were on our way to the studio, uh, you mentioned uh, the desire to drop some reality around the shoulders of Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> yes. Um, and, the, and again, one, <clears throat> it's, it's, if people would read it, it's really clearly there. Thomas Jefferson, and in the close of my book, uh, the soliloquy of Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson was fully aware of what the impact of the long-term impact of enslavement would be on white people and black people and everybody in between they were confused he talked about the horror associated with slave masters did and that their children imitated the behavior among their friends and younger ch children that were enslaved and that that built into a sickness on the part of Europeans and a hatred and antipathy on the part of Africans. And his greatest fear is that it would end in the extermination of one or the other race. He says because God cannot side with us, meaning Europeans, in this contest. He cannot side with us, which means God will side with them. And it is only his hope. He says, indeed, I, I tremble for my country when I consider that God is just and that his justice cannot sleep forever. So Thomas Jefferson not only knew at the time the wrongness is associated, but recognize the long-term impact that it would have. Clearly, this is, these are his words. I'm not making this up. But again, it somehow gets absent of the curriculum. Somehow we, it gets removed, and we talk about all the other things that he was able to expound upon. And I think that if we're talking about healing, if we're talking about a response, we have to look and understand historically how the injury transmitted itself, what it looks like then, now, and then contrast that with Africa. How can there be any healing if you don't get the right medicine? Well, first of all, here, here's how it's got to start. It's got to start with unearthing the truth. Yes. <laughs> got to first medicine. start there. And the, but you see, again, you have to ask this other question. What is the fear? I always look at these things and go, what is the fear of unmasking it? What will that mean? Not just to the people, people themselves, like Native people and African people and Latinos, what will it mean for your pen to unmask it? And like I said, very clearly, it'll mean little Brittany and little Tommy will see a different face of the America that they've been taught about. They will see something that isn't pleasant, hence non-voluntary immigrant, instead of enslaved people who were, were sold and, and chained and bred like animals. You see, that's a different picture. So what will it mean to unravel it? It'll mean that people have to look at this square 
And they're going to have to own what has happened and recognize that this history is an important history. It is American history. And yet there is this feeling like, why well, is this so unpleasant? Those chains, wouldn't that be unpleasant to see those chains on the Statue of Liberty? Not if those chains represented what they were supposed to represent, and that was true freedom. It wouldn't be a sense of, of shame. It would be a sense of pride. But because it didn't do that, send us your tired, your poor, did not happen for people of African descent, those chains would spell the total oppression which has occurred up until the current recent apology by the House of Representatives. Okay. Another break. We'll be back. So you're saying that not only do people of African descent need to have this therapeutic process in order to regain self-esteem and motive to move forward, but whites need it too. Absolutely. No, absolutely. You know, uh, that the absence of this truth is a perpetuation of an ignorance that um, will result in all of our demise. And so what I think is that the fear associated with the truth, um, I think, is what is creating the problem. And I think once you get it out, we can begin to extricate it. We can begin to deal with it. But there's been so much denial, fear, guilt, pain, all of those things associated with these truths that we don't recognize that this thing is festering into a hot mess that doesn't have to. Um, one of the things, again, the purpose of, of, my, of my work and even looking at this is, you know, not only was it a part of my own kind of uh, growth and development, but my purpose was to try to look at where, what did we lose along the way? What do we need to recapture it? So my focus right now, which is, you know, the, all of my work is really focused on healing. It's all focused on education, on, on learning. So the first learning was, what was it like in Africa? What is it like in Africa as it relates to um, Africans? What was injured through American chattel slavery and the oppressive eras that followed American chattel slavery um, was the, the, the destruction of relationships. If you were to kind of boil it down, I want you to stay with that theme because it is the focus, uh, the matrix, if you will, that we use to get back through. And part of it is to look at what were relationships like. Well, it was collective, people worked together, there was this whole sense of tribe, the connection to the land, all those things. Then you had chattel slavery, folks getting ripped off, taken places, traumatized, untreated by that trauma, continuing perpetual trauma. What did that result in? Well, from an African vantage point, as a result of that collective, that, that village, you have respect, you have honor, you have nobility. You have this sense of self, trust, all of this. Now, what do you have when you have a destruction of those, re those relationships? Chaos. The polar opposite. You have the polar opposite of that. You have people who are suspicious, who are fearful, who are distrustful, are um, not willing to work with other people that have fragmented senses of themselves and other people. And thus, you have this kind of fractioning that continues to happen. So a question that comes up with, weren't we doing better at some point? That's always a question. And the truth is, we were. During segregation, we started doing better because we started having to deal with things on our own and building some sense of that community back. Then it got fragmented by, hey, guys, come on over here. We'll treat you like everybody else. So now we want your money. We want your uh, community. We want your land. We want all of that in, in exchange for equality. Well, that wasn't, wasn't true. We clearly wasn't true. So what happens then? So now what we're left with is this response. We're, we le we're left with this fragmentation. The key is through the relationships. Recently on Black in America, there's a gentleman.